Today, here's what I'm gonna do. I have a website, cookforfolks.com. It's under monetized. In fact, when it comes to ads, it's doing okay, but for affiliate marketing, it's basically doing nothing. And realistically, we've put almost no effort into affiliate marketing on that site. So in this video, I'm gonna show you the plan that I have for this, and then I'm gonna go do it, and then I'm gonna show you the results after a few weeks. So first, we gotta dive into the plan. So when it comes to affiliate marketing, one of the best tips that I have that really helps me is to start with the products I wanna promote. It doesn't matter how good um, the average conversion rates are on products, it doesn't matter how um, high the commission is. If it's not a product that you can actually get behind, it's gonna be a lot harder to sell it. And if it turns out to be a product that kinda stinks, people are gonna lose trust in what you're saying. Your reputation's gonna go down the tank. We have to keep a long-term perspective in mind. I talk a lot about reputation because I believe it's getting more and more important uh, in search, especially with Google, to have a good reputation. And so destroying it because we pick the same affiliate products as everyone else because of their high commissions, is not going to be worth it. So for Cook for Folks, what am I doing? I'm picking products that I actually use in my day-to-day -day life. One of the things I'm gonna be talking about on Cook for Folks is pellet grills. Some of you know I made a video a couple years ago on a completely different channel about pellet grills. That YouTube channel we didn't really do much with, but still today on that small channel where most of the videos have very few views, that has like 350,000 because it's a really good video. I know I could do that again, and I could do that with Cook for Folks. I also know I could do that with the blog content to make it the highest ranking content related to various search queries. So I'm picking some affiliate products I really like. I wanna show some of them to you. And this company here, Z Grills, sent me this grill for free. Uh, and that's because they saw my video that I made before, and they really liked the video, even though their grill didn't win in my comparison. And uh, they asked if I wanted to make a new comparison video and maybe some other content with their grill in it. And I agreed, but I let them know if I'm doing another comparison, they're gonna get, they're, they're gonna get whatever, I, whatever I think. Um, it's not gonna impact the way that I view their grill. So anyway, they sent me this new grill for free, but to do a comparison, kinda have to have things to compare it to. So I went and bought this one. Actually, it was on sale at the time, which was cool. I was able to save some money, but um, get a grill that is in a similar price range. I picked up this one because it's unique. It's totally different, different style, but it's in about the same price range um, in a pretty uh, expensive brand. And so you're only able to get the little one for that price. And then of course you can't do a pellet grill comparison without comparing it to a Traeger. So I picked up one of those in about the same price range and I'm able to reuse one that I used in the video before, a product that I actually already own. Um, which is another great thing you can do, by the way, if you own a product in your niche and it's one that you would wanna talk about, absolutely go ahead and use what you already have. Save some money, but be able to give people some really good advice. So, I mean, this seems like it could be a lot of money to spend, but frankly, it's totally worth it. And it really wasn't that big of an investment to make to be able to make the kind of content that we can make now because we actually have the products. Now, you look at this example already and you're like, I can't do that. This is just one example. There are other less expensive products that I use in my day-to-day -day life related to the topic of this website, cooking, <laughs> and that are gonna be a lot more attainable. So keep watching throughout this video and you'll see how I use these in the various affiliate strategies that I'm gonna implement on this website. All right, the next thing we're gonna do is we are going to look for affiliate products outside of Amazon. More and more we're finding that people are regularly recommending products on Amazon because it's super easy. But what we're also finding is the lot, a lot of the best brands have been leaving Amazon. And Amazon is, in a lot of industries, getting filled with kind of no name products or just kind of no brand products. <laughs> the Amazon FBA crowd has essentially taken over Amazon and filled it up with products that are kind of commodity products. However, there are a lot of affiliate programs off of Amazon and people are getting more and more comfortable making purchases off of Amazon as you know shipping becomes a little bit more standard across companies and there are some really, really good shipping solutions and options that makes it inexpensive for different brands. Essentially, we're all getting more comfortable with buying stuff 
other places other than Amazon. And what you'll find is that the products you probably want to recommend the most might not even be on Amazon. So don't limit yourself to what's on Amazon. Feel free to look even broader. This is another great reason why I like to start with the product first because then I can take the name brand of the product, search in Google the name brand of that product uh, and affiliate program. One of those kinds of products I would definitely recommend is the Ninja Blender. Maybe not this exact model. Uh, this one's good, it's fine, but there are definitely some that I love even more that have um, some other really cool tools, right? They have like the food processor built in and I like to use it all the time to make my acai bowls. And I can link to some Ninja products on the Amazon website. But if I wanna get away from Amazon, I can also look, just Google Ninja Affiliate Program. You're gonna see it here. Just by Googling Ninja Affiliate Program, I landed on this page. It's an easy place for me to come. Well, I'll call myself an influencer here and I can sign up for their affiliate program. It doesn't necessarily tell me right here who it's through, but I happen to know um, their affiliates through the Impact Network. Apparently they're the same brand as Shark. So I can be an affiliate directly through the Ninja website and people could purchase directly from there. But also, I'm an affiliate through Impact here. So if I go to my brands, I'm an affiliate for da -da 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 -da, Walmart. And Walmart also sells Ninja blenders. And Walmart is also a website that people are really comfortable purchasing from. They have free shipping, um, like two day shipping a lot of the time. So it's basically like buying on Amazon. Okay, so now I wanna walk you through some different strategies for how you're going to place affiliate links on a site, how I'm gonna place affiliate links on Cook for Folks to be really effective. And there's kind of four unique strategies that we teach in Project 24. Project 24 members, make sure you go check out our affiliate marketing course. It's been there for almost a year now, um, but I don't think everybody's seen it yet. So make sure you go check that out. But in the first approach, essentially the way this works is we're gonna focus on a specific product and that product is going to sort of be the main content of the post. Uh, you can do the same strategy, by the way, if you're making YouTube videos. If you're gonna do a blog post about a specific product, it can be extremely beneficial to just film a short video, even if you just embed it on the website, even if you don't even put it on YouTube. Just because you with the product is going to improve that level of trust substantially. There are so many bloggers who are faking it like crazy. And so the level of trust that people have is kind of in the tank. But with this approach, I'm gonna make a specific piece of content highlighting a specific product. Um, for example, I've got this Camp Chef pellet grill over here. I might make a piece of content that doesn't necessarily just talk about the Camp Chef, but it's really heavily highlighted. I might even point out specific features. It'll have a little bit more of a strong affiliate push to that product. The next approach I'm gonna take is where I'm actually testing the product. This is an approach you can't take without the product. You can get away with that first approach by highlighting maybe its features, um, talking about how useful it could be and in what situations you would use it. But with this second approach, the testing is a big part of it. And that testing actually builds even more credibility and allows you to rank for various search queries other than just like review of XYZ product. If somebody wants a review of this Camp Chef um, pellet grill and they Google that, they might find my content and they might find a hundred other blog posts. But if they ask a little bit more technical question or if they ask a question about how long it takes for one of these grills to heat up from cold, they're not gonna find that in most people's product reviews because most people don't know. But if I did testing and I said, you know what? It takes about 15 minutes when I go outside, I turn it on and it's up to temp within 15 minutes. That's helpful. And it's something you can only do when you've personally tested the product. One of my favorite ways to do this and something we'll do on Cook for Folks is to get multiples of that type of product and compare them side by side. A lot of people will do like a best X for Y kind of post, right? The best pellet grills for backyard uh, smoking. Instead, I like to take that a bit further and I say, you know, the best pellet grill under $650. And then in my featured image, I show a picture of me with five of these things, which I just showed you I actually have. If I made a little video clip of me with them just showing a couple specific things that I mentioned in the article, adds to the credibility. So my favorite way to do this approach is actually to do a roundup of products. And then I can write articles about the specific ones if I want, but mostly I'm gonna focus on various other search queries, not just a direct product review. The cool thing is when you've done this, right? You've purchased these products, 
you can choose a favorite, right? And if you have a favorite and it's something you would personally use because hopefully you're living your niche to some extent, now we can hang on to that product and we can do the next approach. In the next approach, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have um, a particular product that I use frequently show up frequently throughout my blog. Um, or again, on a YouTube channel, I could do the same thing. For example, this Ninja Blender is always here at our office. I use it all the time and it's a good one. So if I'm writing blog content about anything that could possibly have to do with a blender, I am going to include a photo that includes this Ninja Blender. And then in that blog post, I might have a section that um, somewhere in the post that's just like products used in this post or products recommended from this post and I'm gonna have an affiliate link to the product. It's kind of like when a NASCAR driver has a brand like on their clothes and it's like, I am a partner with, with all of these different companies because they sponsor me. It's almost like that product is sponsoring you but the sponsorship only happens through the affiliate links in most cases. It's actually really easy oftentimes in these blog posts to have a two or three sentence explanation of the product and why you like it so much. If I'm talking about awesome acai bowls for lunch and how easy it is to make a whole bunch of them at once, then I might say, I particularly like this blender because it beats through it so fast and so well and, I, it, you know, and it's, a, it's a fairly large size, it handles it extremely well. I've used a whole bunch of other blenders that just can't handle it. It takes way too long to blend it. And the other ones I've used that work well, well, they cost twice as much. So I've gone with the Ninja. Then you have an affiliate link. It's that simple. The fourth approach I think is way underutilized. And this is when there's just a product. Maybe it is an Amazon <laughs> type product that is kind of a commodity, right? It doesn't matter so much which one you get, but the reader maybe doesn't know that they need that kind of product. I mean, some of them surely do, but that's okay. For the ones that don't, we're just gonna mention, for this, you are going to need one of these. If you're preparing this kind of food for a group of this size or more, you're definitely gonna wanna make sure you have a food warmer. Um, or for grilling, if I'm talking about pellet grills and I'm talking about anything on the grills, like the use, notice that these, uh, these are in informational posts. They're not like in product review posts. It's, I'm talking about something related to grilling. I'm gonna say, and by the way, one thing that you're definitely gonna wanna have is grilling gloves. I particularly like this one <laughs> because these gloves, I mean, they're cut resistant, they're super duper heat resistant, um, but also the thing I like most about them is that unlike most of the really rubber or silicone gloves, I don't feel like I have much dexterity with those ones. With these ones, I actually get a reasonable amount of dexterity, which makes it a lot easier for me to grip the things that I'm using, the tools, the foods, etc. What I'm doing here is I'm essentially giving you um, a convenient link and a convenient piece of information to let you know about a product that is gonna solve a problem that you may or may not have even known that you had. It's a convenient recommendation. We used to do this on camperreport.com when we had that site. We would have articles about, you know, when you first get your camper and all these things you need to do. And then it would be things like, when you first get your camper, the stuff you just need. We would mention, you're gonna need a white drinking hose and guess what? Every camper needs one and they don't come with them. And so here's a link to a, whatever, 20 foot long hose. It doesn't really matter which one you get. It just needs to be one of the white drinking hoses. That's a convenient link. It's a convenient, helpful thing to do. When you're winterizing a camper, there's certain things you're gonna need and you may not know you need them. So conveniently, I'm gonna provide you with a list of those tools or those products. You're setting up solar panels. Here is my tutorial on how to do it. And here are all the tools and all of the materials you're gonna need to get the job done right. It's so convenient and it's so helpful, but people ignore it because we get too focused on product-oriented content, the money post. The money post is some of the most competitive content out there, and those are the types of posts that are regularly causing sites to get hammered in Google updates because they're so affiliate heavy. Focus on helpful information first. So this is my approach for Cook for Folks. It's the direction that I'm going. Well, now it's time to get to work actually doing all these things we talked about. So um, before too long, we should be able to have some pretty good results that we can share with you. And as soon as we have those, we'll put them in a video right over there that you can click on and see exactly which things work the best and which things might not be worth your time.